to Sunday school today. Let's pray first. 우리 기도 먼저 시작합시다. Hold your hands. Close your eyes. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. This is worship time. We want to praise you. Help us to focus and understand your word. We love you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's praise the Lord. Stand up. I think he's changing me. Oh. He's changing me, my precious Jesus. I'm not the same person that I used to be. Sometimes it's slow going, but there. Little by little bit, every day. Little by little bit, in every way. My Jesus is changing me. Oh yes, He's changing me. Since I made that turn of my face, I've been walking in His grace. My Jesus is changing me. Ah oh, yeah, He's changing me. My precious Jesus, I'm not the same person that I used to be. Sometimes it's slow going, but there's no knowing that someday perfect God will be. One, two, three, four, little by little bit every day. Little by little bit in every way, my Jesus is changing me. Oh yes, He's changing me. Since I made that turn of my face, I've been walking in His grace. My Jesus is changing me. Oh yeah, yes. God change our thought, mind, and pray prayer. Let's sing, I am somebody. We are precious child of God, right? I am somebody. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I am somebody. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I've been washed in His blood. I've been Yes, you are. You've been washed in His blood. You've been filled with His love. You're a child of the Most High King. One, two, three, four. We are somebody. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are somebody. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We've been washed in His blood. You guys are so precious of God. 너무 너무 소중한 하임 자녀들이죠. Next song is Jesus loves me. Yeah. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me.
so. Amen. Jesus loves us so much. Right? Amen. Now it's time to worship time. Let's pray. It's time to worship song. Now it's time to hear God's word. It's the time to open my heart. Speak to me and let me hear. I know that you are very near. I want to hear your word. I want to know you more. Give me the faith to believe. Dear Lord, please speak to me. Now it's time to hear God's word. It's the time to open my heart. Speak to me and let me hear. I know that you are very near. I want to hear your word. I want to know you more. Give me the faith to believe. Dear Lord, please speak to me. Amen. It's prayer time. So today's representative prayer is Teacher Harim will pray for us. Last pray. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us grace through WRC. Please open my spiritual eye and give your strength for my field. And give the pastor Braggs who delivered the message the field of the Holy Spirit and power. Let the kingdom of God come upon here. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Hello, hello. Ah, there we go. Hi, Remnant. How are you? Good? Did you have a good week? Two thumbs up. How many of you were on vacation last week? No school. Everybody went to school? Really? Ah, okay. Ah, no school. Okay. Was it fun? Yeah, okay. Summertime, usually you have breaks, so. I'm sure your parents were enjoying that as well. <laughs> okay, let's review the message. Do you guys remember who we talked about last week? His name is? David. Not David. What is it? Huh? Elijah. Very good. So we talked about Elijah. Okay, so Elijah was a prophet in the northern kingdom, and the king was King Ahab. King Ahab had a wife named Jezebel. Do you guys remember Jezebel? Jezebel. She brought all of these idols and evil prophets in, and they were worshiping a different god. So when Elijah came, he said, let's have a battle to see who is the true god. So Elijah and his god... Versus Jezebel's prophets, the prophets of Baal and their God. And so they set up two altars. And so they say, we're not going to light the fire. We're going to pray for fire. And so the prophets of Baal, there's 450. They start singing and praying and shouting and screaming. Does their God... Baal answer their prayer? No. All day they do this, but there's no answer. And then Elijah prays, and what happens? Push. Fire from heaven 
and it burns up the sacrifice, the wood, even the stones. It burned up everything. And so that proved that the true God is the God of Elijah. And then after that, he wanted to quit and run away, but God gave him hope. He met with Elijah and said, I will replace the king. You are not alone. There are 7,000 remnants that have not bowed to Baal, and I have prepared someone to take over after you. And his name is Elisha. Okay? And that's what we'll look at today. So, today's title, Victory Over the Age of Aram Without Fighting. Elisha. Okay, 2 Kings 6, 8 to 23. Okay, so let's read this verse together. 2 Kings 6, 16 to 17. Follow after me. Don't be afraid. The prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Amen. Okay, so once again, last week we looked at Elijah. Today we're looking at Elisha. Can you guys say that? Elijah. Elisha. Okay, I might get them confused because the names are very similar. But today, Elisha. So Elijah, after he left Mount Horeb where he met God, he went and he found Elisha. And he called Elisha to come and follow him to be a disciple. And so Elisha left everything he was doing and left that life and followed Elijah. This was his heavenly calling and mission. Because Elisha felt called by God to be his disciple. So he took on this mission and followed Elijah. So what happens? As they were traveling, they came to the city of Gilgal. Gilgal. And when they got there, Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. I must go to Bethel. Okay, now Gilgal was important. It was a nice city. So is this a good opportunity for Elisha? Yes. He could have stayed in Gilgal and been a very good prophet. And he would have been very famous there. But he says, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So he follows him to Bethel. And they come to Bethel. And they're there a while. And it, Bethel is a nice place. It's good for Elisha to be there. So Elijah says to Elisha, stay here. But I will go to Jericho. Elisha responds, as surely as the Lord lives and you live, I will not leave you. Finally, they come to Jericho. Jericho is a very good city too. It's a good place. So Elijah says to Elisha, stay here. I must go to Jordan. This is a good place for you. Why not stay? But once again, what does Elisha say? As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So what made Elisha different? He was not like the other disciples that would just stay and leave and do their own thing. Elisha stayed with Elijah to the very end, always following with him. And because of that, he was blessed. So they came to the Jordan River, and Elijah took off his cloak. He rolled it up, 
And he struck the water. And psh, the water divided to the right and to the left. And so the two crossed over on dry ground. Dry ground. This happened before. Do you guys remember? With Joshua? You remember? They went to cross the Jordan too, and they crossed over on dry land. So here, they're at the Jordan again. And what happens? Elijah asks Elisha a very important question. Since you've stayed with me to the very end, tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken? So Elisha could have asked for many things. He could ask for money, for clothes, for connections to more people. He could ask for many things. But what does Elisha ask for? He says, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. What was the most important thing for Elisha? It wasn't money. It wasn't fame. What was most important for Elisha was the spirit of God. And that is what he asked for. <coughs> so what happens after he asks for this? He asks for this spiritual power. And what happens? As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared in the sky. And because of this, they were separated. And Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. So did Elijah die? No. He was actually just taken up to heaven. And who saw this? Elisha. And he stayed until the very end. So he received a double portion of Elijah's spirit. <coughs> so as time passed, Elisha, he went from city to city and he helped people. He did many miracles. He helped a lot of people do good things. And as he got older, he became more famous and he did many great things. But I'm just going to tell you about one thing. So as Elisha grew older, what did he do? There was a time when he was helping the king. The king was at war. They were at war with the king of Aram. So Aram and Israel were at war. And this is the king. He keeps making these plans. He wants to set a trap for Israel and the soldiers and the king. So he schemes and he makes this plan to trap the king and the soldiers. But every time he makes a plan, Elisha receives guidance from God and he warns the king, don't go that way. It's a trap. Go a different way. So each time he warns the king of Israel, and the king of Israel is okay. But the king of Aram, he gets angry and upset. Why does this person keep trying to help? Why is the king able to avoid all my traps? So he gets so angry. And he finds out it is the prophet Elisha that is helping. So when he finds this out, who does he go to attack? Elisha. He says, we have to surround and capture this enemy, Elisha. So he said, let's send an army and we'll capture Elisha. So where was Elisha at this time? The city of Dothan. Can you guys say that? Dothan. Dothan. So they send an army, many, many soldiers, and they surround Elisha in Dothan. What happens? Is Elisha afraid? No. The servant of Elisha saw the army, and he's very afraid. Oh, no, what are we going to do? We're surrounded. They're going to capture us. But Elisha said, do not worry. Those who are with us are more than are with them. Elisha was going to show his servant how to win without 
fighting. Is that possible to win without fighting? Yeah. Yes, that's good. You have to believe. Because usually people fight when they want to win. But Elisha, he's not going to fight. He's going to do something else. He's going to do the Dothan movement. Let's see what that is. So Elisha prays, Lord, open my servant's eyes so he can see. So he prays. And God opens the eyes of the servant. And this is what the servant sees. <gasps> His spiritual eyes are open. He saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha protecting them. But other people, they cannot see this. Only those with spiritual eyes. So as they came closer, Elisha prayed. And Elisha prayed to God, strike the army with blindness so they cannot see. And the entire army became blind and they couldn't see a single thing. So what does Elisha do? He walks out and says, this is not the road you're on. This is not the right city. You're in the wrong place. I'll show you where to go. Did they believe Elisha? Yeah, because they don't know him. They can't even see him. They're all blind. So he says, I'll lead you to the right place. And where does he lead them? To the capital of Israel, Samaria. That's their enemy. So the enemy was led into Samaria completely blind they come into the city, Elisha prays again, open their eyes. And they open their eyes when they're in the city. And they're shocked. Oh, oh my. Where are we? We're in the middle of the city. And all around them is the enemy. They're surrounded. So what's going to happen? The enemy is there. So the king asks, should I kill the army? Should I kill this enemy? It would be very easy. But Elisha says, no, don't kill the enemy. Instead, throw the enemy a feast. Can you believe that? No, this is the enemy. These are the bad guys. But Elisha says, don't harm them. Don't kill them. But instead, give them a feast. Let it be a party. Let's celebrate. And that's what they do. They throw them this great feast. And what happens? The soldiers, they're happy. And because they're happy, they don't want to fight Israel anymore. So for a long time, they become a friend of Israel, and they stop attacking. So what is the conclusion? Elisha showed that with the power of prayer, you can win without fighting. They didn't fight. They didn't kill. All they did was pray, and this enemy turned into a friend. And we call that the Dothan Movement. And so this is important for you remnants too. When you guys are in trouble, when you're facing a problem, don't always fight back, but what should you do first? What should you do first? Pray. Pray. And just like Elisha, you have someone fighting for you. Someone that's going to protect you and watch over you. That sends angels from heaven. That is your background as remnants. So you too can win without fighting. Okay, I want you guys to remember that. Whenever you guys face a problem or a bully or some problem, Always pray first, okay? Okay. Let's follow today's verse. 2 Kings 2.9. Follow after me. When they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit 
a double portion of your spirit? Elisha replied, Amen. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today's message. Help me receive spiritual strength like Elisha and win without fighting. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Remnants. Amen. Always pray first. Amen. Let's give offering to God. God gave his blessing for us first. Right. Jesus is the Christ, and he's in my heart. Christ, and he's in my heart. He's the answer to every problem. Jesus abides with me, and he will spread his word to every place on earth. And he will come again soon. Jesus is the Christ. Hi, everyone, again. <laughs> I'll give you announcements today. Um, welcome to our English Ministry Children's Sunday School. We're glad you could join us. Thank you. Um, so just one big announcement. On August 17th, the church is going to host a VBS program for elementary students at the church here. Okay, so that's this Saturday. It's the remnant department of our church. So the Korean side, they're going to have a program for the children here at VBS. Um, and we're just wondering, out of the TCK children that are joining, if you're TCK and joining that program, uh, please let me know, um, just so we can know about who's going to be attending that. Okay? Um, so just see me after the service, and you can just let me know if you're going to be joining that. Okay? Um, for today's activity, I don't have one with me, but let's see. Does someone have one? Oh, okay. So for the... Is this older or younger? Younger kids. The younger kids will be doing this. And the older children will be doing something with their teachers. And I don't have it either. <laughs> okay, they'll be using this. So they're going to do a little role playing with the teacher today. Okay? So the teacher will be Elijah and the students will be Elisha. Okay? So explain this in the groups. Okay? So enjoy your forum time. We'll have... The first, second, and third graders over here, uh, kindergarten and daycare students here, and then over in this group on my left will be fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, okay? So go to your form groups and enjoy, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs> 